Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're just plain living here on a old fall day, a little bit overcast. I'm John Gray. Good morning, John Gray. I'm Peggy Burton. How in the world is Peggy Burton this I'm morning? I'm great. All right, well, of course I you mean, are. I am so impressed I'm alive and still moving. Isn't it great? It's <laughs> wonderful. It's wonderful. We had a, we had a, a, a week that other than the stuff going on in the world, which is right. absolutely crazy. We usually don't talk about bad things happening in the world, but there's there's some craziness going on right now that's just ridiculous. Yeah, uh, it's very hope sad. We, hope we can figure out a way to uh, to uh, help make that go away. I hope so. I hope so. You know, so uh, there's a lot of factions to consider. A lot of things going on. A lot of things going on, and uh, a lot of things going on around this town. You know, this past weekend uh, was Oktoberfest. Uh, Oktoberfest at it started out at beautiful. South Jackson. The weather was perfect, and I had a family reunion, so obviously I went to that first. And then by the time I got to the Oktoberfest. Sky was getting a little dark, and all of a sudden the wind goes and it turns winter. Yeah, <laughs> just like for that. Sure. Just for like sure. that. But our man Andrew was was on the scene on and the got, scene. got a lot of video, and we're going to show you a lot of that. You know, there's there's things. Of course, this, that was the weekend. This past weekend was Jack Daniel's weekend for their big barbecue. Yeah. So there were a lot of people out roaming around, you know. And when that's happening, good. they stop. Hey, what's going on over there? And I said there might have been a festival in Balboa, and it's kind of yeah, nice yeah. that so many places, especially when the weather's beautiful, that you can drop in and stay a little while. And well, and we've had we've had. Uh, what, almost two weeks with no rain up until a little bit yesterday? Yeah, it was. A you know, and, and so uh, we, you know, it's fall. It's that time of year that it's just beautiful around here. It really is. Uh, the leaves that's are why we turning. Come, that's why we stay. I had two deer in my, right up against the pool fence. Oh, I'm, did you? I have never had them that close, and they were kind of like teenagers. You could tell they weren't babies, but they weren't adults. Sure. And they were cavorting out there. You know how there. those teenagers are. <laughs> <laughs> I love looking Let's at them. Let's go over and see what that is. <laughs> Reckon we can swim in that cement pond. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, Lordy. But, you know, there's a lot going on. Uh, how, of course, we, we've got, look at that up above Peggy's head on that picture. You look at the picture. Look, there it is. See that jack-o'-lantern up above your oh, head? Oh, yes. It, it matches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 that time's coming around, and, and uh, I know there'll be a lot of uh, hay fields and hay rides and yeah, pumpkin and, and walks. Farms and, that are open for people sure. to bring their children to wander through. That's, that's a wonderful thing. Well, you know, we, we all are so busy that there's one thing that we never need to forget, and that is we all depend on our farmers to Absolutely. survive. Absolutely. Don't ever forget the farmers. And, you know, they work. The day's never done for those people. The land never stops. The land never stops, and I think it's kind of sad that more people don't plant a garden, at least raise tomatoes and peppers and things you eat all the time. There was a time <laughs> in history when almost everybody in Middle Tennessee would have a garden. Certainly. And uh, <clears throat> grocery bills are going up, 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 and you can understand why. It costs more to farm the land. And so I'm all for farmers markets and supporting the farmer. Support them all you can, you know, because without them we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be eating. And I can, two stories, one when, when they built Oak Ridge. Yeah. Everybody from Tennessee that didn't have a job went walked, up. rode a mule, whatever they could do to get up there and get a job. That's right. My aunt went. I remember that. And I know my grandmother and grandfather were up there, and that's where I was born. And one thing that the government forgot is they built all these little houses, and most of them weren't much bigger than this room we're in. Right. Little flat-top houses, and because uh, they that that county went from... 2,000 people to 140,000 people in like just six months. Yeah. It was just something like that. Huge. They forgot that most of the people who came up there to go to work 
were people who lived on the land and they all had gardens. They all had gardens. And that they were going crazy because they couldn't grow anything to eat because they're used to eating fresh grown stuff. And they didn't get so enough the money So the government probably. took a spot of land over there and made it into garden sites. See, I think that's brilliant. And they had a, they had a drawing and if you wanted a garden, you put your name in and everybody drew. And if you, maybe one year you got a garden spot, maybe the next maybe, year you didn't. Yeah, but at least, but they they, were, at least they did that. I think every little town should do that, have a spot where people Well, you know, Robin and Dunn, when, when Robin was on our city board, one of the things she did, and, you know, Robin did a lot of things uh, for the city, when for the people when she was on that board, that most people would, when they got said, oh, you, you go take care of Go Green, or you take care of rain barrels or something right. like that. She took it on and and made something wonderful out of it. And over at uh, CD Stamps, there was a, a there city was garden over there. A city garden now, over I don't there. know whether that, that Parks and Rec did. I don't know whether that's still there or not. But another funny story about my dad, when we moved from Druid Lane to Hood Drive, and Wirt Armstead lived in the middle of all of that property, he and his wife, and they owned all that property, and they were very, very protective. I mean, your garbage can couldn't show. Uh, there was no gardening. Yeah. No clotheslines. You know, this fancy neighborhood. Cleaned up the neighborhood. Well, Daddy would take and he would plant flowers uh, short growing flowers and then behind that he'd put a cucumber mounds in <laughs> and then he'd plant some taller flowers and put the tomato, uh, tomato plant. plants <laughs> in and so daddy had a garden hid behind flowers on the side of the on the side of the house and that, i that always was, thought that, that was, was pretty smart. cool yeah yeah why not why not? yeah why not so uh I, like i was saying uh halloween 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 trick-or-treat i've got uh, a halloween cat you do. I How have, is old? I have jazz, 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 jazz man. man. <laughs> he is so funny. Is he? He really is a funny You're cat. You're having fun with him, aren't you? I am. I love that cat. I, I really think I probably needed that cat. Oh, yeah. Because when you just want to sit down and rest a minute and all of a sudden this wild cat comes and jumps on your lap. About that high off the floor. Off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sight. Our house, you go through, you come through the front door and you go down a hall and there's the back door down there and then you come through and you into the kitchen and into the dining room and into the living room. Dottie will take off and she'll just circle. And when she hits a rug or something and, and to make the turn, the rug flies the rug up against the wall. And yeah. You know, and I can't believe how fast they are. They're, They're very extremely fast. fast. Very fast. I was sitting down for a few minutes having a cup of coffee this morning and my cat came in and I have a one of these things you exercise with a, uh -huh. a stretchy it was green stretchy thing and it happened to be on the floor and he stood back and stared at it and then attacked it with all <laughs> full force <laughs> so they're fun to watch <laughs> we have a manatee a little short manatee a little white one that's stuffed and Walter, I call him Walter. Yeah. And because he sort of, he sort of, he sort of looks like uh, he's thinking all the time, you know. Walter sounded like a pretty good yeah. name for him. She'll, the Walter will be there minding his own business, <laughs> in a corner or over it against a wall somewhere, and all of a sudden she'll see Walter over there and do the same thing. She'll get down and yeah. she'll look and she'll look, and then all of a sudden she hits him. He flies up in the air. She'll jump up and catch him, grab him by the ears, throw him down, beat on him a little bit, then then off then she, she off she goes. You know, so my cats. cats my cats hasn't learned to cover up his stuff in the litter box. He's learning though. He's they getting will. there. But when he gets through this business, he jumps out and he cleans the floor. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. He, he acts like he's what he doing. What he needs to be what doing. He, right. <laughs> He'll figure it out. <clears throat> hey, I, I want to read a couple of things out of the out of the Loku book of mine uh, that have something to do with what's going on right now. Good. Shining eyes, jagged teeth, light the path to something sweet. 
Some look funny. Some bring fright. The symbol of a spooky night flickers to a candle's burn. Jack-o'-lantern. Oh, yeah. Let's Pumpkins. see what else we have here. Oh, I love this one. It's not spooky, but it is kind of spooky. Okay. The fox sneaks in again, digs through mounds of discarded refuge, and uncovers the fragile remains of past love. Eggshells. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fox done been in the hen house again. There you go. Let's see what this one is. Wrong page. The sound of feet up and down the street. A ghoul and goblin army hunting something sweet. Little saints decide, disguised as haints knock on every door. Sacks filled with candy, but still wanting more. A dentist's favorite holiday helps rot little teeth. <laughs> All Hallows Eve. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. I don't know why we don't catch on to that. <laughs> Too much candy is bad for the everything. Let's However, it's kind of nice to have once in a while. Can't knock it all the time. Do you write every day? Yeah, pretty much. Good. Do you have a favorite time to write? <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm going to do, a, I'm probably going to do a collection called From the Side of the Bed. Oh, I like that. Because, you know, you know, I text you sometimes at 2 or 3 in the morning. Uh, you know, I wake up. I spent, a, I spent a lot of my life, probably 20 years, on four to six hours sleep. And so if I go to bed early and the dog barks, if friend says, oh, you let's go to up. bed early. You go to bed at 9 o'clock, dog barks at 1 o'clock, you, you know, you're wired up. So I'm right. sitting on the side of the bed. I think that's a nice title. You know, so I bed. write a lot from the side of the bed. Ah, oh, this is good here. This, this... This is a good one to end on because it uh, it's sort of about the way our society is now. Okay. Can't accept baked goods. Might be laced with drugs. No matter how cute, adults best not give hugs. The fun tricks of yesterday are buried in a trunk. What's next? Politically incorrect to say boo. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Boo! Boo. We'll All be right. back in a minute. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. For many senior citizens, life looks like this, but it doesn't have to. When you make your home at Parkview Senior Living, life after retirement takes on a whole new meaning. Daily exercise options, fun outings, happy hour, game nights, movies and popcorn, arts and crafts, Enjoying friends over chef-prepared meals. Parkview Senior Living, where you're always home, but you're never home alone. He's a little bit of you, he's a little bit of me. The trash along the roads out of Tennessee. He's the garbage that we find. He's the dream we left behind. Lord, there ain't no lower class than Tennessee trash. Yeah. 
Tennessee trash. We have met the enemy, and he is us. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit, Tullahoma, and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. I was skeptical about getting the COVID-19 vaccine. There are a lot of opinions being shared. But I had the chance to talk with my doctor about my concerns. He told me the vaccines are backed by decades of research and that the vaccines are proven safe and effective. Now I'm protected and ready to put this pandemic behind us. Join the millions of Tennesseans who have decided to give COVID-19 vaccines a shot. Visit covid19.tn.gov to find an appointment today. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know, there's three wonderful things in this life, faith, hope, and love. I hope we all have faith that we will get love, but right now we got hope. <laughs> She's here with us, and, you know, hope, hope, is, the, hope is the wind that, that keeps you afloat. Hmm, very interesting. Thank you. You know, faith is, faith is what you wish to happen, and love is the result of your action, but but hope is, is what the wind that keeps you, transcends you from one to the next. So Very nice. I, like, I, I like having you here because you, you make a lot of things transcend in this town. Oh, man, I'm just fortunate enough to be um, one of many, many, many I know people that, doing wonderful, amazing things in this community. And just grateful for the opportunity yeah. to be part of this Isn't it fun, Isn't community it fun to have a job where you feel like when you, at the end of the day, you, you've given and, and it's Served. been received yeah. and something good happened? Yeah. 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 We, um, you know, we walk into work every single day and it's, it's different. You know, it's never the same day twice, which is really nice. Oh, it's wonderful. And, um, so we always have exciting things like um, this past Friday, we, our office was the Jack Daniel Barbecue. I mean, how incredible, what an incredible opportunity. And um, a, a brief story about that, a lady approached us, uh, she saw all of our Tullahoma stuff and she now lives in New Zealand, but she lived in Tullahoma for years and years and years. And she got a t-shirt, she got one for her and her whole family put it on. She took the magazine and was just raving about Tullahoma, how much she loves Tullahoma. And so um, I feel like I should say, hi, Marie, because <laughs> um, she said that, you know, she, she follows us. And it was just really, really neat experience for somebody in New Zealand still yeah, talking about Tullahoma. Yeah, and I mean, all, these, all of these shows are on our, on our YouTube channel. But she can watch every show we do on YouTube. And, uh, you know, and isn't that, isn't that something that you're at Jack Daniels, and I saw the pictures, with Tillahoma spread everywhere, and someone has the, the audacity to ask what you do with the money that the city gives you, whether you're supporting oh. Tillahoma with it or not. Oh, well, I'm going to bring that up just for a second because that's what they do. They support Tillahoma. They sell Tillahoma. Get that. Stick it in your hat. Well, it was a fantastic experience, and uh, we really enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun working the booth with the um, with Winston Brooks. He's the executive director of the Tullahoma yeah. Area Economic Isn't Development he a fun Corporation. Guy. So Smart. fun, um, and of course we had some barbecue while we were there. You so did. we did, we did, and um, so anyway, yeah, just 
um, that's just one example of all these great fun things that we get to do. And I will also do a shameless plug tomorrow, Wednesday, October 18th, is Chamber Appreciation Day. Really? And so, yes. Um, I mean, we try to celebrate all year. But uh, so tomorrow, tomorrow is, the, is Chamber Day, so we are very excited about that. And we get to celebrate with our ambassadors. We'll have an ambassador meeting. And so what a fun group to, oh, to yeah. celebrate that day with. And uh, the, the Chamber's participating in the art crawl this evening. And so, uh, you know, our, our office is a stop for anybody that's going to be in the downtown area. Very good. On the art crawl. And uh, so many exciting things. And as we head into this last, I mean, we're in the last quarter of the year. Right. We have a golf tournament on Friday, October 27th, sponsored by First Bank. We have the Wobble Gobble Chamber 5K coming oh, up in November. And we are so excited about that. We already have a great uh, participation. People really excited about that event. And uh, the goal is 500 people in the downtown area. And it's not just people from Tullahoma registering for this event. It's people from outside um, of our community, even as far as Florida. We've had people come from Florida to run in the Wobble Gobble. <laughs> and so, um, you know, like I said, very, very exciting stuff. We're also adding a new element this year called Runner's Row, where nonprofits can set up for free. We're only taking 10. And um, share their information with the runners while the runners are waiting on the results. And so there's going to be a lot of really fun activities on Runner's Row, bounce house for kids, and then of course, the one time of year that 122 West offers brunch for the Wobble Gobble. And so, you know, there's opportunities there. Do you want to run, walk, wobble down Jackson Street? Do you just want to come cheer people on? Do you want to volunteer? Um, but if nothing else, come have brunch. What, the one time, one One day time a year, isn't that great? Yes, and then, um, <coughs> We have announced our theme for the Christmas Parade, the 67th Annual Christmas Parade, sponsored by Stan McNabb Automotive. 67. 67 years. And the theme came, the winning theme came from Farrah Elementary. Um, her name is Lainey. And the theme is Winter Wonderland. And so, um, and, and just a little backstory on how we solicit the theme, how we choose the theme. Santa makes a very special visit to Tullahoma in August to go with us to visit all of the elementary schools. So we walk into the elementary schools in August and we have a police officer because of course Santa does get a police escort and we have Santa Claus and these kids are just <laughs> starstruck. They but, but see how how great that is that you know a lot of people had no idea about that mm -hmm. and that's a good thing because Santa Claus needs to stay kind of you know he just can't show up anywhere all the time. It's got to be something special. And this is so special, and the kids get so excited, and Santa passes out the theme contest and talks to them. And then, so we get stacks and stacks and stacks of theme submissions from all of the elementary schools. And uh, we, the committee reads through each and every nomination, and then they make the selection. But I think it's a really fun way for us to engage with the, the kids in the community and let them be a part of the magic um, because, you know, that's, that's kind of the point. And, so, <coughs> and great partnerships with the school system, with our CEO program. And so I say all of this to say so many things happening in our community, um, so many opportunities, uh, both Wobble Gobble Christmas Parade. If somebody's looking to volunteer, they're looking to get involved, we could use your help. Um, and then the last exciting update we have about the Christmas Parade is that so many people are used to seeing it come from South Jackson and going to the high school. Well, this year we have flipped it. And it will start at Tullahoma High School and go down to South Jackson. There will be yard parties along the way, people um, doing fun things in the yards. And then South Jackson is having an after party called the Jingle Mingle. The and jingle so, mingle. <laughs> um, but logistics, it gives us, believe it or not, the road is wider in front of the high school, so we have more room for setup. But then at the end, there's three exit opportunities. And so, and then again, of course, people can end at South Jackson, go to the jingle mingle and, and have a good time. But uh, we have made that very important change this year, as well as the candy cloth. 
for so many years we have said no candy. Well, this year we are saying distribute candy safely. So we do have some guidelines on how to distribute candy safely. And really it's taking the candy to the crowds with walkers, with volunteers, not throwing it from floats, just because again, the, the safety of our youth is always top of mind. Sure. We've worked very closely with the Tullahoma Police Department on this plan. And um, so it is, people can, when they register, they can have walkers go and hand candy out to the crowds. And so really, like I said, we're, we've changed the route. We're, uh, we're bringing candy, and so um, it's going to be great. Sounds like a great deal to me. Yes, Santa's, um, Santa's house is getting um, some, some updates thanks really? to Russ Barrett. Santa's getting a re his house getting a remodel. <laughs> his house is, <laughs> is getting, um, getting a little bit of a facelift. It's getting repainted and some structure things um, fixed on it. So like I said, wonderful, wonderful things happening oh, in yeah. Oklahoma. And we just sincerely invite each and every person to join us for all of these wonderful things that we have happening. And as I always say, you don't have to be a business to be a member right. of the chamber. Mm -hmm. Any individual can be a member of the chamber. Mm -hmm. You want to know what's going on in town? Get involved with some of these organizations. Join South Jackson Civic Center mm -hmm. for a nominal family fee a year. Join the Chamber of Commerce. Join the Science Center. Join mm -hmm. the Arts Center. And, and find out everything that's going on in this town. And speaking of Santa going into the grade schools, if you don't have anything to do and you have time on your hands, I'm one of the readers and there's 125 mm -hmm. of us or 128 of us that are going into our grade schools and reading with our children. And if you want to have your day and your week really start off i read on monday morning and it is the beginning of my week and there is nothing they thank me for being there i thank them for allowing me to be there when you spend an hour with second and third grade mm -hmm. kids if that doesn't light up your life you really have a problem very and true. they need they need a lot of them need adult contact oh, very yeah. very much mm -hmm. and it's just outstanding it's just wonderful so Volunteer, get involved with this town that you live in and find out just how wonderful it is. And remember, what keeps the boat afloat? Hope. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Thank you for having See me. See you, honey. Next time, we'll be right back. I want to invite y'all to come by Clayton's, downtown Tallahoma. We try to serve the community, the area, and we try to help people with their feet and comfortable shoes. We still measure feet. We have a great new arch mat. We have insoles. Please come see us at Clayton's and let me help you find some comfortable shoes for those achy feet. My husband was diagnosed with a spinal infection. He lost his ability to swallow and the movement of his legs. I couldn't turn over in bed, I couldn't walk, I couldn't eat. They were just wonderful in the treatment and care they gave my husband. I uh, regained my mobility where I was able to go home. It is miraculous. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. STEM is everywhere, like here, behind the scenes of The Walking Dead. When we break down clothes, we tumble it with trisodium phosphate, rock salt, and dish detergent. We stitched together images of our model and created a 3D set that can be walked through in a VR headset. We're able to turn 12 walkers into a thousand walker board. STEM can create new worlds on and off the screen. What will you make with STEM? Get inspired at SheCanSTEM.com. Hi there, this is Terry Stroop, Stroop's Accurate Refrigeration. Summer's about to wind down, fall's right around the corner. It's time to get signed up for your fall maintenance checks, and let's get out and support our local high school football this year. Let's go, cats. Wow. 
Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. This and that. It's conversations with John and Pat. With John and Pat. With John and Pat. Hello, everyone. I'm John Rickman. And I'm Pat Welch. And John, we're here with segment 43 of the conversation with John and Pat. We're going to talk about a little serene location, a church, a cemetery close by, just the most. Uh, Nice little spot you can ever find out between Tullahoma and Shelbyville. And uh, I thought this might be the proper song to do. Put it on. There's a church in the valley by the wild wood. No lovelier spot in the dale. No place is so dear to my childhood as a little brown church in the church in the bay. No spot is so dear to my childhood as a little brown church in the bay. How sweet on a clear Sabbath morning to listen to the clear ringing bells. It's tones so sweetly calling. Oh, come to the church in the in the wildwood, oh, come to the church in the day. No spot is so dear to my childhood as a little brown church in the bell. A sweet oh, little song. Was sweet. It was. You know, my brother, he, he's a Church of Christ member over in Murfreesboro, and not too long ago is his turn to lead the singing in the congregation, and he asked how many people didn't know that song, and he was about, about half the people did, yeah. and about half the people didn't. So that's a one that I kind of grew up liking because it's what we're talking about, that little serene spot. Right. And uh, Pat and I have been over to this uh, place before. John, uh, I don't know if we're morbid or if we're really <laughs> historians, but we like go to old cemeteries, and uh, you can glean such a, a knowledge of local history by going doing that. Well, let's just show the little church, Philip, okay. if, if you can. This is Jenkins Jenkins Memorial Lutheran, Lutheran Church. Lutheran Church, it's and it's out on the Mullins Mill Road. The I Mullins, believe that's right. Mullins River Road, whatever. Close to Chevrolet, you come back about a 45 degree angle back towards Telahoma. Right. And if follow you, the road and it's a de dead ends back there. If and you it is cross a really the pretty place. Big Duck River Bridge going to Shelbyville, it's the first left. You can get right. out there you that way. You marked it well there. Well anyway, this little church, show it again there, Philip, if you would. This little church chap that was established in 1849, John. That is a old church. Same year as the 40, 49ers there went after go. gold out in California. And uh, it's a wonderful little spot there. And, a and it's got picture. a historic cemetery just to the right that has yeah. a really pretty metal fence around it. And we've uh, gone in there and done a little research. And Bomar, Schaffner's, and one in particular that Pat's going to kind of go into a little the, depth. The Coopers are, are buried there. And that is Pr William Prentice Cooper Sr who's, I believe his house, before you go into Shevel again, you turn left on the Motlow mm -hmm. College Road and there's a big frame white house on top of the hill on the left. And I believe that's where, that was William Prentice Cooper's uh, house. He was 
I believe, mayor of Shebel at one time. How do you say that, Pat? Shebel? Shebel. <laughs> Yeah, that's the correct way to <laughs> pronounce it, John. Uh, he was mayor of Shebel and uh, also, I believe, was a, a Tennessee state representative representing uh, Bedford and uh, Marshall counties. And his, uh, did, is your... the Governor the, of Tennessee? The, he was not. His son was. His son was. Okay. Have you still got the, we got the, uh, the grave marker, Philip? Grave marker. We hope it's the right one there. It's hard to that see there. That may Pat. be. Russ. It is hard from right here. That may be, that may be Junior's. His uh, son, William Prentice Cooper Jr., uh, went to local schools and Shebel Public Schools, and then he went to Webb mm -hmm. in high school. And from there, he went to uh, Vanderbilt for two years, transferred, and finished at uh, Princeton. And about that time, World War I was breaking out, and he served as an officer in World War I, but I don't believe he was involved in, in uh, too much combat. When he came home, he um, went to uh, Harvard and got a law degree, and then he came and practiced law in an office next to his father's law practice, I believe. And um, he eventually ran and became a state representative, and then he ran and became a, a state senator. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the late 30s, he had enough names statewide to be become elected governor. And he was uh, governor from 39 uh, to 1945, which meant he would have served right before World War II and through World War II. And he was credited for really helping uh, get uh, the country prepared for war and, and uh, help establish Camp P, Camp Forest. Uh, I believe he's involved in the, the uh, base in Smyrna and uh, maybe one other that he was instrumental in, in uh, getting. But he was, he had a, got enough reputation for helping Roosevelt get the country ready for war that he was one of the vice presidential uh, nominees uh, at the Democratic Convention when Truman was eventually uh, made vice president. Uh, after the war and after he was finished in 1945, Truman named him ambassador to uh, uh, Peru. Yeah. Now, he, Prince uh, Cooper Jr. was a, 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 a long-time bachelor. And one thing is a little bit unusual about him. He he had his mother, who was who's buried in that uh, cemetery at Jenkins, with his uh, father. Uh, she she became and no and was recognized as the first lady of the state while he was governor. And he took her to Peru, and she became really really well known and popular with the uh, Peruvian people. Ambassador to arrest. Correct. That's the way they. And I believe that's on, on the, the stone. stone. On the stone. That's right. Yeah. Well. In 1950, 1950, after he finished his term in Peru, he married, and he married a girl from Johnson City, and her name, his mother's name, was Albertine Schaffner. She was a Schaffner uh, Cooper, and his wife's name was Hortense Powell, hmm. and she was from Johnson City and quite a bit younger than he was, and. Uh, they had a house, uh, a really nice brick Victorian house that has a stone wall just south of the main part of the city of Shebbyville and a really, really pretty house. And it's not hard to find today. And she, uh, she's still alive. She, and, but though she's not in the house now, she's in a, in, in a nursing facility, I believe, in Nashville. And they had three sons. The middle his son is Jim Cooper, who's been uh, uh, he's been, been in politics uh, U.S. A representative time. for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. uh, first, he represented, I believe, our area, and then he moved to Nashville and, and uh, was elected uh, to, to serve the people there. And uh, th th to go into that cemetery and not know much about it is uh, really interesting to find those those people there, and you have to. Uh, well, the first time I went, I couldn't, I couldn't make the ages match up to where, how she was first lady, and I didn't. In the, but she, she's, his mother, Prentice Cooper Jr.'s mother, uh, was served as first lady to her son, and also as ambassador S, as you 
see it. That to, that uh, road by the church led out to other roads, but it stops there now. It seems there like now. there's a farm there. Then there's a farm. It, there's a lot of land back there, and there's a really pretty house back there in the back. And evidently, yeah. whoever bought that house has bought all that land. That's right. And they've and the now closed the river's it off. close by. It's a beautiful spot. Yeah, it's a spot. beautiful spot. And it's about time for us to stop Probably our little. Probably so. And, and um, but, uh, but we one segment 43 a good one. I believe it was. It was. And it wasn't just because, John, it wasn't your, you didn't author that song. <laughs> no, I didn't, sadly. Sad, sad. Sadly, I didn't. Uh, but your, song, not, your songs have been great, John, but that was a, the church in the Wildwood is a pretty song. It's nice. That closes out Thank you, segment everyone. 43. Uh -huh. Thank you, and we hope to be back. Talking history about this and that. It's Conversations with John and Pat. With John and Pat, with John and Pat. The Bookshelf in Tullahoma is the fundraising arm of the Coffee County Literacy Council. Since 1988, the Literacy Council's goal and purpose has been to support and promote adult basic education in Coffee County. We enable individuals to complete their high school equivalency exam, which helps them get better jobs or continue into higher education. The Bookshelf at 114 Southwest Atlantic Street in Tullahoma is where we sell used books, which are donated to us by the community. Come see us, bring your books to donate, and join us as you find every genre of books that you can imagine. I had a knee replacement, so they've got me in life care, which I'm very, very thankful for. I couldn't garden, I couldn't do my flower beds, I can't chase my little dogs. I have been in several therapy sessions for knees and back, and that's the best therapist I believe I've ever been to. It's tremendous because I'm able to walk again, but if it wasn't for the care, I wouldn't be where I am. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit Tullahoma and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. Senior Living, active, independent senior living at its finest. Do you love sports? Then you should know about STEM. Because maximizing nutrition, analyzing peak muscle performance, calculating the perfect shot, and more are all made possible by science, technology, engineering, and math. In fact, there are more careers than ever in sports science. So if you have a passion for sports, then think about getting involved in STEM and improve everyone's game on and off the field. Get inspired at SheCanStem.com. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Welcome back. I'm so excited to have with me Ashley from United Way. Thank you for and having me. And you're out yeah. here planning a, a big workshop that I think is so exciting we for nonprofits. Are. Yes, ma'am. Let's you give us the facts of what's happening. So I'm the executive director for United Way of Highway 55, and we actually are partnering with United Way of Franklin County to provide a workshop for our local nonprofits in the community. And that's all nonprofits. 
Yes, ma'am. So it's all nonprofits. It's called the Thriving United Workshop. And so any organization in Coffee More Warren, Franklin County, um, that's wanting to come and learn more about grant writing, marketing, or media relations, uh, we would love to have them. All those things are huge. Oh, yeah. Grant writing especially. There's and money out there a lot of times that, that small businesses aren't aware of, I think. Exactly. And grants are different. They are all different. Some of them are very extensive and require a lot, and some of them are a little not well, as much. So, And you have simple. to know what time of the year to apply for them as well. So we want to help, you know, give more resources to local organizations and That's bring wonderful. them together too to network and share those resources. I know the date's November 10th, the so date you might is tell, November them, 10th. tell them where and what to do and to, Absolutely. to get organized. So, so the Thriving United Workshop will be on November 10th. It'll be from 9.30 to 1 p.m. So it's a half day workshop. Right. We will have lunch provided by Buffalo Wild Wings. So we and all this really is free? Them. Yes ma'am, it is wow. all free. That's I know. so good. Um, we actually have a light breakfast that will be provided in the morning. So if you will come a little early, I'd say 15 minutes early to get some breakfast get some and, coffee and some coffee from Fuel So Good. So again, we're trying to keep everything local. I'd like um, to say a word about Fuel So Good. Yes. They are such wonderful people oh to goodness, they are. donate to so many causes. They do. They are, honestly, they they give back a lot and they are present for so many. You and know, they probably have the best coffee around. <laughs> They do. I mean, anyway, and I changed the subject. No, I'm no, sorry. no. They are. They're a wonderful just, family. I'm so happy that you that you brought it up because they really do give back to our community. And there's so many businesses and individuals in our community that do come together. And when there is a need, it is incredible. Uh, it is that incredible. That we really do this, this show community. up. Um, so I do want to say, I mean, I commend our community for that because very giving. Yes, very giving, and we do we do work together. So, but this is going to be a great opportunity to help our local nonprofits build in these areas. Um, it will be at the Atlantic Venue, which is downtown Tallahoma. Right. Beautiful venue, beautiful place to come. Um, we do, the, now seating is limited. I was gonna, yes. yeah, they have to make a reservation. So yes, and they can go on our website at highway55unitedway.org. That's so easy. That's, yes, super easy. There you easy. go, right there, there write that down. <laughs> or call so, that number. Exactly, so highway55unitedway.org to be able to register for for this workshop and then to kind of give um, to make sure that if they're gluten free or tell us kind of what their and lunch so option is. So you want to mention some of the participants yeah, so that are going to. we are excited. We have for Marketing Simpli Simplify, we have John Fletcher. Um, some people know him as Bull and he's from the Manchester area. He okay. actually helps marketing for Common John Brewing oh. and a really great place to go but he's also helped um, and you know he has a ton of experience. Uh, 25 years of marketing Wonderful. experience. So we have uh, Pam Barnes. She's in website and branding and marketing and she has so, a lot of experience too. Owns a marketing business so she'll be talking in that area. Our grant writer will be Tabitha Curtis and she's actually from the Franklin County area and her experience um, is extensive. Good. So we are very excited that she is coming along to talk about grant writing for at least an hour. Grant writing is huge. Oh, uh, yes. I think a lot of uh, people in business maybe don't realize that when I say huge, I know you can find out how to do it, yes. but it takes some work. Oh, it's a skill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is definitely a skill. And so we're excited to have Tabitha come on and help Good. us with that. And then in our media relations, Ashley Wright, she will actually be coming down from McMinnville. Good. And she will be uh, teaching about how important it is to get the word out in the media, like we're doing today, about things, exactly. you know, about your your nonprofit and about your event and your fundraiser that's going on, and how to connect with our media um, and do that. So that's really important too to get the word out. So she's really gonna. We're inviting um, media to come out and, and also network with these local nonprofits. That's wonderful. Yes. So anybody, you know, anybody's able to come out during that time. So. Okay. We always welcome people on to, yes, to this show. Exactly. And I say often to TV stations in this area, how wonderful. Great, yes. net, great network in place. Exactly, and utilize that to get mm -hmm. the word out because our community wants to know what's going on and they want to be a part of things. And so 
Um, so yeah, I think this will be a great opportunity it is. To, it awesome. to share resources and we definitely want to bring our nonprofits together for that and help help build their missions. Up. What is your limit of people that you're going to allow to come in? So the limit, it, it, I mean this venue holds quite a bit. Yeah. I would say probably max a um, hundred. Okay. So, so you need to get your <laughs> Self signed up. Yeah, right you need away. to get self signed up pretty don't quickly. Wait. Go today. And, uh, yeah, exactly. And this again, it's a free event, um, and it's a great opportunity to come and learn more. So, if you are a local organization, we we invite you to do this. So, yeah. Ashley, you've been with United Way for four years, did you say? Or yes. Yeah, so I've I've been with United Way since 2020, March of 2020, right when COVID hit. And I hit the ground running because <laughs> that, <that's laughs> like, I've, I've heard that about you. Yeah, and, uh, and it was it, it has been such an amazing experience. Great. Um, and you know, I meet people from different walks of life, and um, we're able to connect with people and 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 help organizations, but but also help individual needs as well. And this and, is all organizations. Yes, church. Yes, churches uh, too. I know some and, people yes. would ask that question. So, oh, absolutely. Uh, because, but they are nonprofit. They are nonprofit. Yes. And, uh, so that's a, yeah, church they can related learn things too. too. Exactly. And we actually, on that note too, we actually have. Um, I did do a list of events in the community for oh, Halloween events going on. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are so many community Halloween events happening. <laughs> there, uh, there are. If you, are a, if, if you see a church or a lot of businesses are having uh, having Halloween festivities and Oh, there's and something going on all the time. Oh, everywhere. So I'm going to tell you that, you know, I would say in tonight's a downtown Tullahoma Arts Crawl. That's happening. That's happening. Yes. Yeah, so I want to remind people tonight's that 5, 5 to 8 p.m. But we also have, I mean, our downtown downtown um, let's see where is it downtown Tullahoma trick-or-treat is is October 31st exactly and it's where kids can be safe yes exactly and, it's a safe and get treated without with somebody businesses. being afraid they'll be bothered exactly it's a and wonderful opportunity 3 to 5 p.m. Um, downtown Tullahoma but I mean we have this list I do want to say on our Facebook page United Way of Highway 55 um, I am continuing to update this list and Good. it's all of Coffee County so it's not just Tullahoma, that's a, that's it's a lot County. of places. There's a lot of events happening. <laughs> and a lot of but it is so it. thrilling to see a lot of things that. going on. Exactly. Things to entertain people and entertain children and, and yeah, bring families as together well. in a safe environment. And um, again, yeah, so there's many churches, there's many um, there, there's many businesses doing things as well. So we just have a great community. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley, you could probably tell us a lot more, but I think we're being turned off here. So okay. <laughs> I'm back and do it again. We'll be back with more things. Thank you. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! For many senior citizens, life looks like this, but it doesn't have to. When you make your home at Parkview Senior Living, life after retirement takes on a whole new meaning. Daily exercise options, fun outings, Happy hour, game nights, movies and popcorn, arts and crafts, enjoying friends over chef prepared meals. Parkview Senior Living, where you're always home, but you're never home alone. Hi there, this is Terry Stroop, Stroop's Accurate Refrigeration. Summer's about to wind down, fall's right around the corner. It's time to get signed up for your fall maintenance checks and let's get out and support our local high school football this year. Let's go, cats. Wow.
So you've been meaning to do something healthy, commune with nature, get outdoors and meet new people. We have the perfect solution. Come hike with us. You can find a Tennessee Trails Association chapter near you, including Clarksville, Columbia Franklin, Highland Rim, Jackson, Knoxville, Oak Ridge, Memphis, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Plateau at Crossville, and Upper Cumberland. We're on the web at tennesseetrails.org. It's fun, it's stress-free, and it's good for you. See you on the trails. There is a road laid out for me. First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> Leading down to the river. <laughs> I am blind, but I need not see. What do you think? I know this road mm. is there for me. If I'm real. Take me down to the river and walk. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Just in time. <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> Just in time. Hey, one thing I haven't said that uh, that is very important to all of us is uh, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Absolutely. Month. Absolutely. And uh, our little girl back behind you. Get the little girl back behind Peggy. She's she's our she's our girl that. Uh, that displays all our causes. She wore the colors of Ukraine, and uh, she she had a that pumpkin hat on until it became uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we just want all of all of you people who and there's a lot of people fight cancer. Um, it's not it's not the death sentence. That it used to be. That it used to be. It used Thank to God. be if you had cancer within several months, you were dead. You know, uh, science and research have come a long way. And uh, the people who are <clears throat> who are leading the fight in that battle are to be thanked um, because uh, they can, they, they might not can cure it, but they can control it in a lot of situations. And uh, which... 15, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, that no, didn't, that, no wasn't, that wasn't there. That choice wasn't there. So we just want to make everybody mindful uh, of uh, the fact that a lot of people that you don't know might be going through something that's, that's pretty big, but they hide it well. And the way that they're medicated now and the way they're treated now is... Uh, is not as Invasive. reflective in, in, in your appearance. Right, and not as, that's what I was going to say, invasive into your body. That They're coming up with different products or medicines. Right, there's are, different things other than you. just chemo that, that drains you, strips you, and, you know, uh, a lot of people do things now. You used to, whenever you had one of those treatments, first thing that went was your hair. Right. And, and you know they're 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 not so much they, that way they're anymore. past that now in, in a lot of ways and uh, we have uh, we have a group here in Tullahoma that that uh, uh, I'm really glad that they're here. It's Tennessee. There's a branch of Tennessee Oncology here Thank goodness. in Tullahoma, and uh, used to you had to go to a Nashville hospital to find that type of service and that type of treatment and uh, and we're we're glad they're here to serve our people here in Tullahoma. Yeah, I think I think when you're suffering from cancer, especially a real serious cancer, the drive to Nashville is just more than you can tolerate. So it's just an yes. awesome deal that we have 
and that a lot service yeah, in our community. Uh, a lot of folks, a lot of folks have to, yeah, and there are a lot of folks out there in our community who are gracious and, you know, their friends, they just can't drive. They can't go through those treatments mm -hmm. and drive. No and, way. You know, we carpool with folks and help people get there and different ones in the community are involved in that. And uh, just keep aware of, of uh, those folks and, and if you see something kind of strange and seems a little different, uh, be supportive. Uh, they're not going to come tell you. Right. Be, just be supportive, I supportive think. Supportive of your neighbors and mm -hmm. your friends. And uh, oh, and I have a very important announcement that what, I what have. What could it be? That is ex <laughs> exciting to me, as exciting as anything I can think of right now, uh, other than me reading to second graders. And that is the fact that Louie and Ann Baldwin are not moving from Telehoma. No, I'm. I, cried when I found out they were leaving and now I'm so pleased that I saw I saw Louie at the at the power company the other day and doing some stuff about his house and I was in there to pay my bill and we stood out there and talked and he said we didn't know anybody down there other than our yeah. family he said it but all of a sudden we realized why are we giving up the town and the people we love we can go see our kids and get a condo there you Stay go. Stay for a month or so and come back home where we belong. <laughs> right. So uh, thank you, Louie and Ann, for making that decision. We're just glad to welcome you back into our community. They've both done so much. Absolutely. For this community and their careers. And uh, what a better, there ain't no better place to be to and finish it out. Tennessee. To finish it out. <laughs> Ain't no better place to be than Telahoma, Tennessee. I think we got a song there. There you <laughs> go. I have to write that one. Uh, Get the words down. So, uh, folks, we're going to bring you some, uh, some video now of Senior Night. And uh, all of our seniors were at the last home football game, were announced and, and praised for their jobs that they've done in their schooling. And uh, on the football field, on the band field, on the, you know, everything that, that seniors do, we're proud of all of you. Be successful as you go forward. And remember one thing, all you have to be is the best, best you, you can that be. you can be. Don't, don't put yourself up against anybody else. You just be the best you that you can be, and that's good enough. We'll see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, welcome to Wilkins Stadium for tonight's Senior Night festivities. We will start with the Wildcat football team. First up, number two, Malik Grizzard, son of Chris Grizzard Jr. and grandson of Chris Grizzard Sr. Number five, Jalen Hill, son of Phil and Adrian Hill.
Ethan Hargrove, son of Brent and Emily Hargrove. Bryson Severson, son of David Severson, and Victoria and Jeremy King. Brad Chadwick, son of Richie and Kara Chadwick. Son of Jonathan and Nikki Simmons. Ezra Myers, son of David and Elaine Myers. Haley Pribola, daughter of John and Cindy Pribola. Jack Dameron, son of Jason and Natalie Dameron. for Matthew Swiger. Cheerleader Allison Swiger. Cross country runner William Swiger. Sons and daughter of Derek and Rebecca Swiger. Diego Stratton. Nephew of Adrian and Debbie Hickerson. Caleb Blackburn, son of Chris and Amanda Blackburn. Johnny and Mindy Morgan. Mason Miller, son of Jesse and Carrie Miller.
Tyler Clark, son of Mike and Lucinda Clark. And our statistician, Ari Safarin, son of Dennis and Luz Hardy. And now our cheerleaders, Bailey Sari, daughter of Leah Turner and Rhett Turner. Anna Lee, daughter of John Lee and Linda Fan. Abby Lynch, daughter of Stacy and Dan Lynch. Emily Malstrom, daughter of Heinrich and Michelle Malstrom. Savannah <laughs> Stroop, daughter of Angel and Joe Stroop. Danica Wilson, daughter of Cynthia and Dan Wilson. And now for cross country, Dakota Call, son of Nikita and Joseph Call. Aiden Johnson, son of Paula Denny and Dwight Johnson. And now for our band seniors. Nathaniel Bobo, son of Michael and Amanda Bobo. Mackenzie Carden, unfortunately is sick this evening, daughter of Norris and Sherry Carden. Christian Davis, son of Chris and Susan Davis, along with brother William. Ella Diamond, daughter of Tom and Tracy Diamond, along with her brother Tommy. Malachi Dorman, son of Brandon and Candy Dorman, along with brother Jonah. Oh, and sister Elaine. <laughs> Sarah Aiken, daughter of Eric and Melody Aiken. Ethan Eldridge, son of Jeremy Eldridge, and Justin and Stacy Smith. <laughs> Isabella English, daughter of Greg and Jenny English.
Xavier Fowler, son of Zarte and Jacinia Fowler. Natalia Fritz, daughter of Chris Fritz and Heidi and Mark Sepulveda. Ian Hobbs, son of dad Ernie Hobbs, stepmom Tamara Hobbs, mom Shauna Cafferly, stepdad Robert Cafferly, and grandmother Izena Thomas. Aubrey Johnson, daughter of mom Paula Denny and dad Dwight Johnson. Elijah Liner, son of Cameron and Sarah Liner, along with sister Julia. Amelia Luna, daughter of mother Tammy Luna and dad Tracy Luna. <laughs> Madeline Muse, daughter of Greg and Andrew Muse and brother Maddox. Darren Newsom, son of Jack and Amy Newsom, and virtually attending is his sister Allison. Isaac Parlier, son of Bethany Parlier. Jacob Pettyjohn, son of Ginny Pettyjohn, along with his brother Charlie. Hope Reed, daughter of Jessica Massengill and Travis Reed. Ben Reed, son of Robert and Donna Reed. Braden Robertson, son of Kenny and Tabitha Robertson. Ashley Scott, daughter of Rhonda and Butch Scott, along with sister Emily. Peyton Siebenberg, daughter of Brian and Julia Siebenberg.
Malachi Stevens, son of Evan Stevens, grandparents Bill and Susan Reimer, and brothers Samuel and Noah. and Greg and Bethany Sterling in their thoughts and prayers. Drew, our hearts are with you. Kelsey Tamalos, daughter of Tara Mortensen and Joseph Bradley, and grandparents Pete and Bonnie Mortensen. Victoria Tyler, this evening with her sisters, Catherine and Lauren Tyler. <laughs> Janet Villafuerte, daughter of Ariana and Cesar Villafuerte, and sister, Brianna. Josie Wagnon, daughter of Fred and Brenda Wagnon. Brady Welch, son of Daryl and Lori Welch. Tracy Gerald. Julian Gillis, daughter of Todd and Jennifer Gillis. So 
Sunny Stowe, escorted by her sister, Adriana Stowe. Ethan Springer, escorted by Colonel Johnson. Anthony Velez, Jr., son of Anthony Velez. <laughs> Renee Williams, daughter of Joshua Clark. You are looking live at Wilkins Stadium, WC Dub, Cooper Field.